Yesterday afternoon, an FBI agent accosted me on a pretty remote Indian reservation in northwest North Dakota, about a hundred miles from the Canadian border, the Mandan Hidatsa Arikara MHA Nation, uh, otherwise known as Fort Berthold. And I'm doing work in the oil field up here. Uh, that's no secret. But uh, I called my employer. I said, did you give the FBI my location? And he said, no, I've known my employer for many years, and I know he would tell me. Why would he not tell me? And he would have called me if he had given them the location. But just to be sure, I called him, and he said, no, they didn't. So clearly the FBI is triangulating, triangulating my phone. Uh, but what the agent did was he stood at the intersection of the state highway and a BIA, uh, you know, Indian road that was only recently paved because of oil field activity. He stood behind his um, SUV uh, facing his the hood of his um, nose of his car um, behind the stop sign, waiting as um, vehicles went by until the oil field equipment I am driving went by and he knew it was me. I thought it was someone who had trouble and needed help and I was trying to give him, you know, like uh, thumbs up, you know, you, you okay? Uh, because maybe I could give him some coolant or some oil or something. But then he walked, there was traffic behind me and he walked in front of me, flashed credentials that I didn't really see because, I, you know, it's a tense situation on a, on a highway at a stop sign and uh, then said he's with the FBI and he wanted to talk about Kenya my activities in Kenya. And I was kind of flabbergasted. I've had many interactions with the FBI over the past 20 years, since I was 18 or 19 years old. But this is the first time they've signaled to me clearly that they were triangulating me. And most of them were during the Obama administration, um, where I was already at the airport, so they'd send a couple. Um, almost every time I left the country from an airport it, during the Obama administration, they would send a couple agents, and those were DHS agents, actually. They might have, some of them, been uh, FBI agents. And since um, September 11th and the Patriot Act, the line between them is not uh, clear. One time in San Bernardino, uh, not San Bernardino, but, but in California, in Baker, California, I was uh, actually interviewed by an agent who, who was a county sheriff's deputy, and a DHS agent, and an FBI agent all in one person, and also a U.S. Marshal. I'm not joking. Uh, I wasn't the only one. Harry Rader, he was all of those things under the Patriot Act. But anyway, this, I digress. This guy yesterday was an FBI agent, wanted to talk to me about Kenya. Apparently, we're having an effect in Kenya. Marie Stopes has been barred since uh, my national radio and TV interviews in Kenya, and I'm not the cause of that of them being barred from doing abortions directly, but I was a catalyst, you know. I was one of the voices that was out there uh, speaking to a national audience saying these people are defying the law in Kenya. They are lawless, they are murderous demons, and you know what, we're not backing down. I'm glad, thank you for signaling, FBI, that you're paying attention to us. Also, the F, the um, some of the... Uh, their Kenyan agents uh, accosted my friend a few months ago in Bungoma. Thank you. We're glad you're paying attention. Keep paying attention because we're going to keep pursuing you with the truth. The truth and the power of the truth, which is the Holy Spirit of God. And the wicked flee when no man pursues. Well, here I am. <laughs> According to the world standard, I'm, I'm no man. But my God is a man of war. So look out.